Hello there, my name is Martin Henley. This is the Effective Marketing Content Extravaganza. And if this is your first time here, you won't yet know that I'm on a mission to give you everything you need to be successful in your business, providing, of course, what you need to be successful in your business is to be knowing more about and implementing more enthusiastically, efficiently, and effectively sales and marketing which is of course what you need if you're going to be more successful. You need more customers more profitably. And if you hang around here long enough, you will eventually learn exactly how to do that. In fact, there is a torrent of content already here. We're coming close to 100 episodes of the Talk Marketing Show. There are more than 20 in the What The series. There are more than 20 marketing news. There's so much information here. It's here for you already. So um, what happens here is I give you everything I know about sales and marketing in the What The series. Um, I pull in anyone I can find with experience that will be useful to you if you are looking to be more successful in your business in the talk marketing series. Every other week, Melanie Farmer comes along and we look at the marketing news and we speculate wildly about what that might mean for you in your marketing life, in your marketing, in your business. I am reacting to the very best and the very worst of marketing content on the internet. I am now reviewing marketing books, marketing services, marketing tools. Um, so there's a lot going on here. So if that sounds like it might be interesting or useful, please God tell me it does because that is the only point of this. Please take a second to like, share, subscribe and comment, get involved because that will keep us motivated to stay on this epic, epic journey. Now, today is Talk Marketing, so we have a guest. And today's guest has almost 20 years of sales experience, including customer service roles, sales rep roles, technical sales, sales management, national product management roles in industries including personal hygiene, household and industrial cleaning, and steel. She is now the co-host of the LinkedIn Branding Show, uh, the LinkedIn Pages Team Advisor for the Small Business Council, the Good for Business Show podcast host, and has been running her business, The Good Training Company, for almost three years. She is also the co-author of Business Gold, Building Awareness Authority and Advantage with LinkedIn Company Pages. What you might not know about her is that she once got a $2 million sale from a single LinkedIn post. She was introduced to us by the delightful Gillian Whitney. Today's guest is Michelle J. Raymond. Good morning, Michelle. And good morning to you. What an introduction. I should save that one and carry it with me everywhere. <laughs> well, the, we will clip that up so that will come out. It'll be like, I'm going to start marketing this as the International League of Marvelous Marketeers. So well done. You are now part of the International League of Marvelous Marketeers. I mean, we haven't got a clue yet if you have any idea what you're talking about, but we will test that very thoroughly um, before you are formally admitted. Um, but yeah, so this is our next step. We're going to start clipping all of these things up and these intros will go out. So if you would like it, um, you are perfectly welcome to have that. I actually did pretty well with that. Today. I think you're the ultimate hype man. So, you know, let's bring on this conversation. I'm out to be a part of that Justice League. So let's go. Okay. The ultimate hype man. Okay. I'm so pleased with that. Thank you very much. I think I might, that might be going in my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> I love it. Well, you deserve it because I think sometimes, you know, it's hard for someone like me to talk about myself and you've just kind of summed up what I've done in 20 years, you know, so well. And yeah, it's kind of cool to hear it come from somebody else. Yeah. Do you know what? I really do dig writing them and I do really dig delivering them and I really dig when people enjoy them. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's so cool. Okay, cool. But we're not here to talk about me, even though, you know, I am the ultimate hype man. <laughs> um, we're here to talk about you and what you do. And so probably where we should start is with this two million dollar sale from a single linkedin post that sounds like hype that can't possibly be true michelle j raymond you would think so but it actually is and it was one of those pinch me kind of moments and sure it wasn't just from the one single post because i've been using linkedin for social selling as part of various roles for around eight years now 
But one day, uh, cast your mind back to around February 2020. It's D-Day for COVID in Australia. Things are starting to get crazy. At the time, I'm managing a cleaning chemical manufacturing company. And as you can imagine, the cleaning industry just went bananas at that time. So hand sanitizer was like liquid gold. And, you know, prior to that, the company I worked for, we were literally might make, you know, 24 bottles a month of hand sanitizer. So because I'm so active on LinkedIn, I do a post and say, by the way, did you know we manufacture hand sanitizer? Lucky for me, one of my connections who was not active on LinkedIn, I didn't even know she logged in, all of a sudden pipes up and says, oh my God, do you guys do that? We're looking for a manufacturer. And, you know, within the next three weeks, because things turned around so quickly, uh, yeah, they're handing over a check, you know, for an order, you know, $2 million worth of hand sanitizer. Put it in perspective, the business I was working for, that was roughly their annual revenue. So it was a huge deal that I was like, wow, this is the power of LinkedIn. This is the power of social selling. And it's just reinforces the opportunities that are out there if you're top of mind and just keep showing up. Okay, 100% being top of mind and keeping showing up because... I mean, it does sound like hype, like you don't say it often, so people don't really know this about you, to, it, to be fair to you. But it demonstrates something really important to me about marketing, which is everyone thinks there is some secret to marketing or you're gonna do one thing and everything's gonna drop. Do you know what I mean? And it might be like in this instance, you do do one thing and everything drops, but it's because you've done the whatever you've done before, like you've built your network, you've shown up, you've been posting regularly, you know, you are being um, seen, you are being promoted potentially by the platform. Um, all of that work has gone in to get to the point. So I think people think that it would just magically happen overnight. That's what I think people think. Um, and occasionally it does happen magically overnight, but it's not actually very magically. It's because you've done the freaking work. You know, yeah. for my case, we're talking like six years previous to that. So as part of my journey on LinkedIn, we're talking that I get a job through LinkedIn, I start this new job and I turn up and I say, what do we sell? Because it was a completely new industry to me. I was selling all the raw materials and ingredients for beauty products. I had no idea. I couldn't pronounce them. I had no existing network to leverage off. And so I said to my boss, like, what do we sell? You know, pretty obvious question for a salesperson showing up at a new job. And they said, Michelle, there's 10,000 ingredients, just go. And I said, yeah, no worries. I, I know that's my job, but I've got 10,000 ingredients. You've given me a customer list of 80 people spread around a country the size of Australia. And then you want me to just go and reach them all magically each month. And I just said, this is craziness. Like we've got to find a way that I can reach more people at a time. And so I asked him, could I do some posts on LinkedIn? And he just looked at me and said, is it free? And I said, yep. And he said, I don't care. Go away, Michelle, just go and sell. And off I went and, you know, fast forward, here we are. But I built an amazing B2B community in the beauty space and chemical space. And that took time. We're talking probably the best part of five years, which is why that one post, you know, goes boom, because I'd already built the network. I'd built my community and I'd built my authority in that space. And, you know, it's the planets aligned. And I took advantage of that, you know, coming through. Excellent. And thank you for sharing because it proves my point which is there is a secret to marketing which is do the work <laughs> you know do the work and the thing is like turning up in a job and not being given like in a sales role and not being given the tools i think is so ubiquitous i think it is like the norm where you turn up and you have to ask them what do we sell and they can't give you an answer you know i think that is so common and like they told you who their customers were. I've been in jobs where they won't tell you who your customers are. You know, it's like, and the thing about that is those people hold the secret to the success, to the value that the company's delivering. You know, they give them money for what they do. And so it becomes circular, doesn't it? Like the customer knows what the value is, but you can't talk to the customer or no one talks to the customers and no one knows what the value is. It's, it's insane. Okay, we need to bring some order to this um, because it needs to be edited at some point. <laughs> 
<laughs> and if we're all over the place, it won't help with the editing process. Um, so you know there are only five questions. Um, the first question is, uh, what is your specialist subject and how are you qualified to talk to us about that? It's actually how are you qualified to talk to us about your specialist subject. We haven't established what your sub specialist subject is quite yet. Um, the second question is, who do you work with? How do you add value to their lives? The third question is, what is your recommendation for anyone who's looking to get better at your specialist subject? The fourth question is, what should people read or what media should they consume? And then the fifth question is, who can you throw under the bus who might endure or maybe even enjoy to have a conversation like this with me? Um, so what is your specialist subject? Do you want to tell us or do you want me to tell you what I think it might be? Well, I'm going to tell you that it's LinkedIn company pages is my jam. And there's not too many people out there that will go out on the record and tell you that that's their space because they have a pretty bad reputation out there in LinkedIn land with lots of marketers. So uh, for me, that's my space helping B2B businesses specifically. As you said, I've worked in B2B sales for 20 years. So how do you grow a business on LinkedIn and how do you incorporate company pages is especially the piece where I play in. And I got into that by accident. It never happened intentionally. And here's what happened. That job where I said that I was manufacturing lots of hand sanitizer, uh, you know, an event happened. I had to quit on the spot. I'm, I'll leave it at that. So I wake up the next day and I said, I'm never working for anybody else ever again. And so it took me some time to try and work out like, what am I going to do? You know, because I had no intentions of ever being a business owner. I was very happy in my job until the big boom, as I call it. And so six months go by, we're in lockdown in Australia and I see my old industry are starting to actually use LinkedIn. And so I reached out to help someone and they said, Michelle, how do you know all of this stuff? And I said, well, I've been doing it for six years. And thankfully they said, I wish I could learn from you. So for the last three years, I set about looking at, you know, what areas of LinkedIn and no one else was talking about company pages. It was mind blowing. All the LinkedIn trainers tell you to update your profile, which I'm not anti that, um, and also create some content. Yep, not anti that. But then they were ignoring the business brand. So off I went and, you know, started investigating company pages and what they bring to the table. And yes, they don't have as much reach as the, you know, personal posts that you do, but it works differently. And so I've spent the last three years digging into that, managing pages, working with the LinkedIn pages team in San Fran to test things in the background. Uh, so yeah, it's been pretty crazy few years, but yeah, company pages, that's my area of uh, expertise. Okay, great. Good. Interesting. I was a LinkedIn trainer. I mean, I wasn't. We were like a whole of marketing thing, but we had a LinkedIn course that I would run every other week for four or five years up until about 2014. So I've done that. Um, but before we get there, this is, I think, our 92nd episode that we've recorded, and it will probably be posted as the 92nd episode unless something goes horribly wrong. We are recording. Um, <laughs> um, so you might be the sixth or seventh LinkedIn trainer, consultant type person. Now, given the breadth of what sales and marketing is, I would say that LinkedIn consultants are overrepresented in this podcast. And this podcast is de de driven by the universe. So, you know, I would say that it's a perfect representation. What I like to do here is make up statistics and, and stuff like that. <laughs> so I would say that if you are now, you're close to like eight or 9%, if you're, there's six or seven of you and there's 90 episodes, why are so many people so busy with LinkedIn? That's maybe the first question that I have for you. Firstly, it's the world's number one B2B platform. Like there is not really anything that competes. It's the place where we come professionally as buyers and sellers to do business. So it's not just job seekers. And I think that's the part where LinkedIn's evolved over time. COVID was phenomenal, the difference that it made. We saw everybody pull their advertising spends off other platforms and bring it to LinkedIn. LinkedIn have had record ad spends over the last three years. And I really love that because it means we've got so many more features come through for company pages. But ultimately, it's where we go to a trusted platform 
to do our buying research and you know there is no other platform that really competes on this level and yes you can do b2b marketing on you know other platforms like tiktok or instagram or youtube all these other kind of things but ultimately LinkedIn's the only professional connection kind of platform. And so that for me is why people are coming here. The opportunities now that we've got 875 plus million people on the platform, I say go fishing where the fish are. It's that simple. 100%. Here's what I tell people. I tell people it's the largest, the most dynamic, the most up-to-date, the most accessible database of business-to-business -business decision makers that has ever existed and will ever exist. So 100%, if, if it's B2B, that's where the fish are, you know? And then everyone thinks, I don't know if everyone thinks this, but you would expect that because that's where the fish are, that's where the fishermen would be. The, the people think it's just a room full of salespeople all trying to sell to each other. But that's not the case at all because the data is available. You know, I think it's something like I've got that I've got the data somewhere, but it's somewhere like around 35% of people on LinkedIn are in decision making type roles from management up. And of course, what's going on is that those people are progressing through their careers. So you would hope that if you have um, good contacts, um, that they will be progressing, they will be taking on more, more responsibility. So it's an investment, I think, LinkedIn, that actually um, grows, what's the word that I want to use? O almost organically, do you know what I mean? You don't have to drive it too hard. It will It will get better. Um, good. Company pages. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. Everyone knows company pages are rubbish. I, I think it's true what you say is, um, what did you say? Well, I um, basically said that people compare company page posts and the reach that you get versus a personal post and the reach that you get there. And when you compare those two things, you would definitely be crazy to just go and post on your company page because you don't get as much reach. But there are so many other things that you need to consider as a business owner. And here's why I want you to consider it before we go backwards and forwards on the merits of company pages. So I told you that I built a really amazing B2B network in the beauty space, around 5,000 you know, really concentrated connections in that space. And then what happens is I get, you know, I go and change jobs, and I took those 5,000 with me and the company that I worked for had nothing because they weren't building anything on LinkedIn. And it happened several times, you know, and the company got the benefit of my personal network. But the second that I left, there was this gaping hole where they hadn't been building their brands. And so that's the thing that I want people to keep in mind. What happens when people are changing jobs, which we've seen, you know, huge amounts of that in the last couple of years, what do you do as a business owner to protect yourself and building a company brand, using the company pages to the best way that they work is, you know, what I would say that you need to add into your arsenal. Okay, good. And so we are talking about adding this into your arsenal. You're not saying, leave everything and invest everything in company pages okay good because i think this goes beyond linkedin because what i do for money is i teach digital marketing i've been doing that for longer than digital marketing has existed let's put it that way um so the the business model of i mean now it's a little bit silly to talk about their business model now that they are seeing their ass to use a cute little um, South Africanism. Um, but the business model was effectively the audience are the product. Um, businesses are potentially the customers. Um, that's the business model. So every social media platform, not every, but the, the major ones, um, drew a line between you, the individual and you, the business. So, there was always a big fuss with um, Facebook when you had to have now, uh, like a, a Facebook page had to become a company page, the same on Instagram, the same on LinkedIn. <coughs> Excuse me. So th there was a definite line between the individual and the business. And essentially what it meant across all of the platforms was as an individual, you can be very proactive. Like, so for example, on Facebook, you can friend request anyone you like but you can't do that with your company page. Um, the same on Instagram, 
mate, not a, in a, in a send them an immediate request. You know, what I mean, you can say please follow my page or whatever. Um, so I've done what you're talking about with LinkedIn because I think I've always taught either salespeople or small business owners where they are the brand. I'm talking too much. I'm going to ask you a question in a second, but I just don't see you know, exactly where, where I am. So what I've always, the way I've motivated salespeople to invest in LinkedIn is to tell them, look, this is an investment you're making in yourself, in your career. Because exactly like you say, when you leave, you take that network with you, you know. Um, and I've always told people, don't bother investing in company pages. The only people who follow company pages are people who want to work for you. So you can let HR or recruitment or whoever do that. You don't need to bother with that. Um, this is what I've told people. Um, you can respond. I need to ask a question so we know. The question is, okay. I, I'm what, very what, happy what, to respond, but I, I think the thing that's evolved to your point is once upon a time, I specifically, key, specifically came to LinkedIn purely and simply to increase sales as part of a role that I did. As I've worked across industries with different clients of different sizes, then what I've actually discovered is that when you build up the company brand on LinkedIn and use that to elevate the personal brands of your employees, this is where the magic happens. So I'm a cake and eat it kind of person. It's not an either or, it's how do you bring the two together? Now, in the time, if you haven't looked at company pages in say the last two years, the number of new features is mind blowing. They still have a long way to go. I feel like we're back at the beginning of where they are. You've only got to look on LinkedIn for like five minutes and you'll be shown so many ads that are all about B2B brilliance and the next decade being all about B2B thought leadership. So I feel like we're back at the beginning of this conversation when in fact, company pages have been around for such a long time, but they were neglected, you know, but now because of the ad spend, you need a company page to run ads. And so they're making them more and more attractive. And so for me personally, all the new features, just to put in perspective, when I started talking to the pages team, you could probably count the employees on one hand. There's now 10 times that in the team itself. And so it's been really cool to see LinkedIn focusing on it because it's the cash cow. You know, I'm just following the money. And it's been interesting to see they've given us tools to grow pages faster, different ways that we can create different content, and they're actually starting to support it. I wish we would be seen in the feed more often. That's not happening at this point in time, and it seems to reduce more and more. But I'm hoping with some of the new discovery feeds and things that are coming to LinkedIn, that that will actually open up more opportunities again. But there's still other ways that you use pages for building brands. And you know who doesn't want to play for the best team? You know, And that's kind of how you need to use them. Okay, great. And the thing is, I'm not going to... The thing is for me is what my mission here is to convince people to do more marketing. And so if that is my mission, I can't then get all sensitive about when they do something that I don't think is quite right or their messaging isn't quite right or their whatever. Do, do you know what I mean? It's like, for me, the issue is that not enough small businesses market effectively. That's it. So I'm not going to get prissy when someone says, oh, you know, I'm, I'm making LinkedIn pages work or I'm making LinkedIn advertising work um, or, you know, ev everything I need comes from Facebook. You know, I'm not going to get prissy like that. But some people do, don't they? <laughs> yeah, look, there's lots of pushback on the platform about ignoring the brand, you know, ignoring your company page. And if you're a solopreneur that's only you in the business, then it becomes a resourcing issue. You know, what are the business goals? Are you planning on selling it at any time? Are you planning on getting employees? Are you always going to stay a solopreneur? And these are the kinds of things that we always, you know, goals first and then work out the strategy that aligns with that on LinkedIn. But for me personally, I've just seen the power of using two together. And, you know, I'll keep repeating that because 
it's just one of those things that if you ignore it, what happens when someone jumps on Google and Google's your business name at the second or third result is typically your LinkedIn company page. Now, if they come across off Google and then they are doing their, you know, stalking to find out whether they want to spend their money with you, what impression are you leaving them? And if the impression is it's a ghost town to me in 2022, going into 2023, it's not good enough, you know, because there are other companies in your industry, your competitors who are going to own the space. So you've got a choice to get out in front and own it or play catch ups, which, you know, in my experience, it's really hard to catch up to someone who already has created a B2B community around their company page. Right. I've just checked mine quickly. I'm not being rude. And, you know, I've just, I've just gone to our company page. Um, it's still got an old logo on it. It's got 266 followers. We are pushing our content through it. You know, we are pushing content. We're, we're in the content gig now, you know, so we're pushing content hard. Um, okay. So the, the question then becomes, what is the opportunity? You know, because I'm perfectly happy to accept everything is just an opportunity, you know, so it's just about understanding what the opportunity is, what the benefits might be, and then how you realize it, which is where this conversation will go. Um, so what have we got to question number two already? I'm not sure if we have. Okay, no, because, because you've brought up for me, what is a dirty word associated with LinkedIn, which is advertising. So 100% I've told people, largely because I've been in a room, like if I'd been in a room of small business owners who had teams, I would have had to look at this company pages thing because you're absolutely right. You can't have, when your staff leave, that channel going away completely. 100% you need to do that. Um, but when it comes to advertising, I've tested it twice in my life and it was an absolute abomination, actually upsettingly bad. Um, so are you a... Uh, are you proposing that people should be invested? And that's the only way you can get proactive as far as I'm aware with a page. Are you Look, proposing that people spend money advertising with LinkedIn? No, definitely not. So I don't get involved with LinkedIn paid strategies at all. So everything that I do with a company page is all built around organic. In my experience, most people haven't done the work to grow the page organically, build the community, understand what content resonates with that community before they go and spend money. So in my experience, I see so many people blowing money on LinkedIn ads. It makes me want to cry. And to me, what it is, you see it in the feed. They've got about 50 followers. Someone said, go run some ads on LinkedIn. So they created a page, got a few followers and then tried to buy their way out of it. And you can't do that on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the old, you know, tortoise and hare you have to be the tortoise on LinkedIn. This thing's a long-term burn, building brands, building community by, you know, increasing those number of followers, finding out what formats of content actually resonate. What do your audience want to hear? What do they want to learn? Most people try and get around that. So I'm working with them back at the beginning, you know, because that's where we're at for most businesses. And it, it doesn't really matter how big or how small they are. In my experience, it's just a part of LinkedIn that's been mostly neglected. And so once you focus on that, then I'm happy to hand you off. But I think there's so much that can be done without spending a cent. And uh, most people, I think before they get on there and try and spend money and buy their way out of it, should really just take a step back and do the work and, you know, listen to the community first. Do the work, do the work. Absolutely. hundred percent do the work. The last time I tested, um, LinkedIn advertising, I put together a LinkedIn marketing training course, um, and I advertised and I think I've got something like 17 clicks and they charged me something like 17 pounds for each of those clicks. And when I looked at Google Analytics, only two of these people had turned up on my page and they'd been there for less than a second. So I, for me, I, LinkedIn, yeah. like I'm happy to discuss pages being an opportunity. LinkedIn advertising is an abomination. And then the other, the only other thing I want to say about this is I did a, a reacted to a Gary Vaynerchuk 35 minutes of marketing strategy where basically the only thing he said was spend $6,000 a month on LinkedIn advertising. And I can't imagine anything worse. Like literally, I can't imagine anything worse. Okay, good. So then I think I've got good news for you. Are you ready for some good news? Always. I think you are eminently qualified to talk to us about 
leveraging LinkedIn pages as part of your marketing strategy, as part of your marketing strategy. So then the issue has been, for me and company pages, you can get um, proactive, you can reach out to whoever you like with your profile and um, connect with them or send them a connection request at least. And my experience is somewhere between 40 and 60% um, will accept if you've got a half decent message. If you are female, that goes up dramatically. This is, in my experience, the only benefit of being female in business in the last 10 years is that you are marketing to sad middle-aged men on LinkedIn and so they will connect with you um, if you ask them to. Um, how do you do that? How do you achieve that with your LinkedIn company page? How do you actually get people to follow you? They're followers, aren't they, on a page? They are followers. And this is one of the things when I first started working with clients a couple of years back, I would have to say to them, we need six to 12 months, probably closer to 12 months to build a follower base because it was just so hard. Like it was ridiculous. And I set myself up with the first few clients thinking we could do it in three months and just, you know, of course that went, you know, up in smoke. So it was too long. So the feedback that I gave to the pages team when they're listening, I was like, guys, no one's got 12 months to sit around and hope for a return when either they're paying for a service or they're responsible for it internally and have to show numbers. So one of the things that's been really important as you know the pages have evolved is the invite credits, which is something that you didn't have in the beginning when I first started. And what they are is every month now we get 250 invite credits that page admins can send out to their first degree connections and invite them to follow the page. Now, when we first got that feature, it was you know, a work in progress, but now what they did is they made it even better. You've got filters where you can target by geography, industry, uh, even universities, you know, and even down to, you know, smaller locations. And so by taking advantage of these credits, and then I would say you're probably sitting around the same acceptance rate. If you are targeted and invite people that you think are going to get value out of the content that you put, give them a reason to come to the page and they will come because people are craving original thought leadership and companies realistically, if they're of a decent size, should have access to more information than individuals. And so it's been really interesting to see that change. So we can now grow a page faster. We can get more followers faster. And that means we can get our message to more people. Uh, and you know, I'm all about how do you amplify the business voice and having more followers is obviously the first step in that. Yeah, so you need to, like, if you're talking to yourself, that's the first sign of madness, isn't it? So audience building, I think, is um, the important first step. Like, or, audience, like, understanding if your audience are there is the first step, and then building an audience is the second step. Okay, good. But why, if they are already your connection through your profile, are you not just duplicating, you're not just having the same audience in two places? Is that what's going on? And then if that's happening, then do you have to produce different content for each of those places? Look, you definitely need different content, although the styles are very, very similar now. There's almost like a fine line that you shouldn't be able to tell. It's a company page post versus a personal post in the formatting and style and types of content that resonate. So to your point about are we really duplicating, I just shared earlier that I grew an amazing niche community around beauty and chemicals, you know, globally. And that's what I was known for. But now I woke up and I'm a LinkedIn trainer talking about company pages. So if you go to my followers personally, you would look and go, I'm just under 12,000 uh, connections slash followers. And then you would go, Michelle, you've only got around two and a half thousand sitting over on your company page. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, that's because half of my connections over on my personal uh, profile are actually not interested in what I talk about now. And so that's what we find. If you start with a company page and really build it around your niche, around your topic, the subject matter expertise, and you don't have all of those hanger on from when you were like worked with someone 20 years ago or you know you've changed industries we've all collected people over such a long period of time that when our new messages go out they land at the wrong audience whereas with the company brand you can actually make sure it's a really super concentrated 
just people that would be interested. And when I say just people that would be interested, I don't mean just ideal clients or customers. Um, I'm kind of encouraging people that manage pages to go a step further. I want you to look at it as a 360 degree community. So suppliers, industry members, even sometimes competitors, uh, anyone that might be in charge of regulations, you know, in suppliers, uh, transport and logistics, all those kind of pieces that make up lots of businesses. We want this to be the one place where everyone comes because you're leading an industry. And so it's rather than just being ideal clients, um, how can you make it bigger than that? And building communities is definitely the way that I see things going in the next, you know, couple of years. Okay, fantastic. Good. And so you can invite 250 of of your actual current um, connections, personal connections, um, and you think the acceptance rate is somewhere around the same. Um, how else? Is there other ways that you can get proactive? Like how do you... Yeah, how else can you get yeah. proactive? Look, it can be as simple as when, you know, for me personally, what I do is if I connect with someone as a personal connection, I'll also let them know that I've got the page, you know, and just as simple as, hey, it exists. Um, cross promotional off other platforms, you know, if it's your link tree or bio links on Instagram or something along those lines, you can always just cross reference people and bring them across. Um, obviously content that's valuable, is, you know, again, my, probably my second thing that I go to, but we don't talk about it often enough. And quite, you know, for me personally, the more that we talk about things and bring the brand to life, again, it just makes the individual employees look even better. Um, and so that's what I would say, content, great content, original thought leadership, um, quite often in long format is what people are looking for rather than short posts, uh, which is interesting. But on company pages, again, they work differently to your profile. They do. Okay, good. So this isn't just about like the business owning this audience rather than the individual. This isn't just about like this. If someone Googles your company, the LinkedIn page might be the third result what's i mean this sounds to me still like a significant investment you know there is there more to this than just the positioning and the ownership so for example when i sorry you've got me thinking now well, <laughs> this that's is when my brain slows down and starts working <laughs> that's the point yes okay good so for example we push the content through all of our channels and one of those channels is our LinkedIn company page. Um, it's got 288 followers. I don't know how that's progressed over time. Um, we haven't done anything proactive and this page has existed for, I would say probably 15 years. Um, so we are attracting 1.75 followers per year. <laughs> <laughs> something like that that's not what, 15 10 by uh, 12 we, we might be attracting a follower a month um when we post these don't have any likes it's not even telling us if organic impressions two here we go this is what we're seeing organic impressions two um organic impressions one organic impressions one two so when we post through the company page how many of those followers are like what is the how many of those followers should we expect to see our post that's what i'm interested to know look the ratio is currently and i i mean my friend richard van der blom does all the algorithm research and you know looks into the feed and all that kind of stuff but we know that it's not you know it, let's look at a personal post it's probably like 15 percent of your audience versus five percent of your company page audience to put it in rough perspectives um showing up in the feed is probably the number one complaint that we have me personally as well um, not having pages show up in the feed is really difficult at this point in time not gonna lie um it is difficult but I find for those pages that are active consistently, that are doing all the right things, not ignoring it, you know, and just chucking some content there and just, you know, who cares? You know, what is really the point of posting on your company page if you're kind of neglecting it? But those that put love into it, that are actually active, 
those numbers go up, you know, and again, it just keeps complementing things. So with the other thing with company pages that people don't realize is that you don't get penalized for, po you know, posting multiple times. Uh, so if you've got the resources, you can actually have more chances of showing out there. So there's lots of different ways to do this. You can use the company brand, like I said, tag the individual and vice versa. Uh, that's another way to grow the audience. Uh, but again, who wants to work for a company that everybody else goes, who are they? What are they? I don't want to, I like Michelle, but I've never heard of a company. And when it comes to handing over money, I think that's in a world where there's no boundaries, you know, geographies seem to have disappeared. Uh, knowing that, you know, when it comes to that point where I want to hand over my money, what am I going to find if I do my research, you know, and that's what we do. TripAdvisor, Yelp, all of these restaurant review sites, we won't do anything unless we've done our research. And so this is a thing, company pages are a destination more than something that shows in a feed. But as I said, if you're consistent, put some good content out there that resonates with your audience, you will have success. But just dumping it there, it, it doesn't work. Okay, cool. Because I think this comes back then to the thing that you've said already, um, that which I think is still true, is that LinkedIn really exists as a recruitment platform. And what I've always told people historically is like, if you're having the worst career, you might spend 5% of your career looking for a job, you know, so it's how do you use it the other 95% of the time. Um, but for me, that comes down to this idea of pages, I think people follow pages because they want to work for those companies you know and so you see the most successful pages are the google pages you've frozen are you hearing me no Hello, you're back. I'm back. It kicked me. It doesn't want to play. It says, get out. Stop talking about pages. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Okay, good. So what I was saying is that this goes back to like LinkedIn is essentially a recruitment um, space. It essentially is. That's why it exists. And somebody even said to me recently that actually they don't care. They make so much money from recruitment. They, make, they charge recruitment companies such stupid um, subscriptions and stuff that they don't care about us if we're getting a marketing benefit from it, if we're using it to, to market our businesses. But it seems to me that, that pages are a recruitment tool. I think people follow pages because they want to work for those companies. And there is a benefit in that. If you look at the most successful pages, Google, Apple, they've got hundreds of millions of followers on their pages. They are absolutely leveraging a benefit. And I suppose this comes now formally to like the quest second question, which is who do you work with? How do you add value to their lives? So what kind of businesses see this as a worthy investment? And what actually does the return on investment look like? That's what I'm interested to know. Yeah, and you're absolutely right about the employer branding and attracting like the best talent to come and work for your business. That's definitely a piece of the puzzle. And you can see because some of the new features that have come through to pages, like your workplace commitments, uh, what your company stands for. There's a couple of new policy places that you can upload. And when you look at that, it's because the platform's actually divided 50-50. So you've got boomers around 50% and you've got Gen Z 50%. And as you said, you're investing in those people that are coming up through their career. We know when they're having a look around, they want to know what kind of a company you are, what do you stand for? What is your purpose for your company? You know, and those are the kinds of things that are important to that generation. And so if you're creating pages, part of it will be having a look at who do you want to work for your business and that's definitely a piece of it i think the other piece to remember yes they've made tons of money out of recruiter and they'll continue to do that but it's like where do they take it further and again i'm coming back to ads and it's not something that i promote as part of my services i love working with businesses who go like this i know i should be on linkedin but and then there's, I don't know what the hell to do, because ultimately they know that their potential buyers are here. They know everyone else is here. If we look at Australia, for instance, 
48% of the population has a LinkedIn profile. Now, of course, you know, some are going to be inactive, but that's a pretty high percentage to be able to target your audience in one place. And so they're starting to look at it and go, well, what do I do? Now within a business, you've often got employees that are not confident to create content who don't want to be front and center. You know, those stats are sitting at 97, 99% of people don't want to be out in front. So again, what do you do? You create a place where they can come together as employees. And it's almost like you're playing as a team. You know, it's a team sport on LinkedIn and especially pages. And working together is where you can get the better results. But it's an interesting kind of space. It's, as I said, I think it's, we're at the beginning of where pages are at, not at the end, like something like Recruiter. And you can see like the thought leadership that Edelman, uh, the Edelman report that LinkedIn's just invested in has just come out again. Here's one of the reasons that they say you should invest in pages, especially in building your brand, is if we go into some kind of recession in the next year or, you know, financial downturn, depending whereabouts you are, is that spends get cut back, you know, discretional spends will be out the window, and then people will be more and more, you know, doing more research into where they spend. And so they'll be looking to brands that are creating thought leadership to support their buying decisions. And so they come to LinkedIn because that's the platform that we go to. So again, companies can't afford to be invisible. Once upon a time, you could ignore your company page. Once upon a time, you could kind of say, who cares? But I think going forward in the next five years, it's time to start paying attention because people are going to come and start looking. Okay, good. So this is almost like a preemptive thing. It's not a proactive go out, win customers kind of investment. Um, this is a, yeah. I this work is with a, a lot you of are representing yourself through your company page. You need to make sure that it's a good representation. Is that what no. it is or not? Look, I think for a lot of the businesses that I've worked with, they're invisible, you know, on the world's number one B2B platform, they don't even exist. And so just being top of mind is so critical today. It's crazy. Um, and I've seen client, I've got clients that I work with that don't want their employees on LinkedIn. And I've had the argument with them and it's not something I encourage, but come hell or high water, where their viewpoint is, is that they don't want their employees active. Like they have a perception that their talent will get poached and it doesn't matter how much I argue the point, they're not interested. And so they actually just engage with their company page, which is, you know, crazy and not something that I recommend. But again, just by building that community and being top of mind with that content, it's actually still working for them. They're generating leads, they're generating business. Um, and it's been kind of crazy to watch because again, I have to challenge my own thoughts about what I think is right, what's working, what's not working. Um, and you know, every business is so different, you know, and most of the time, again, employees don't want to be full-time creators. You know, they've got jobs to do and this is a nice to have. And yeah, there's still an awkwardness around employee advocacy that I think Again, businesses don't know how to manage it. That's what I love working with them for. How do you empower your employees? Give them some training because most people just go, go be active on LinkedIn. You know, it's easy to post, but is that what LinkedIn's about? No, there's more to it than that. Okay, good. All right, so now we're building up kind of like some benefits. Like attracting employees is no, it is one of the biggest challenges. Of, of a business so you know people will go to company pages if they want to work for you and they will follow you um it will very often come up on on google it is representing you so you do need to make sure it's a good representation you can get proactive now um you don't necessarily want to be marketing your employees to to other businesses and it becomes an asset of the business so we've got five pretty solid reasons, I think, for um, investing in company pages. So what sort of companies, like which kinds of industries are um, seeing this as a worthwhile investment? 
It's really interesting to see that change even just in the short period of time that I've been focused on this. So I work with people from the cleaning industry. I work with people from fintech AI, obviously the beauty industry. Traditional B2C businesses are also coming across onto LinkedIn, which is interesting because why? When we've had such really hard conditions in the world with COVID and shipping and logistics problems, they want to find new suppliers. They want to find new partners. They want to form relationships. And quite often, you know, we're not in the same country anymore. The fact that you and I are having conversations on opposite sides of the world is kind of crazy when you think about it. And those kind of business transactions are happening all the time. And so what we're finding is I don't think that there is any kind of business that shouldn't be on LinkedIn um, if they want to get discovered. And of course, you know, I, sorry, I shouldn't say that. There's probably business like that are local stores or restaurants or things along those lines that it doesn't suit. But for the most part, I think everybody's on LinkedIn. And if you want to do business transactions and find and build a network around that, because building a strong business is more than just trying to do everything by yourself. Yes. I think the challenge is, the problem is that there's been an evolution of this. Like we were there, maybe not you. Maybe I was there a little bit late telling everyone they had to have a website. And then we were telling everyone they had to have representation on all of the social media platforms. And now we're telling everybody um, that they need to have a LinkedIn company page. And very soon we're going to be telling everyone they need to be represented on the metaverse. And, 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 and. It's, there's no end to this stuff. So I think the important thing is that these things are properly justified because mm. otherwise businesses do end up spending money that they don't need to spend on things that aren't necessarily going to value them. Look, I see that all them. the time. <laughs> I see that all the time. People are spending money and it breaks my heart because I'm like, why are you doing that? They're spending thousands and thousands of dollars a month on SEO, for instance, and then thousands and thousands of dollars on Google ads. And then I'm like, what are you getting back? You know, one particular client I spoke to, they were spending like a thousand bucks per lead. And I was like, how about you just give me a thousand dollars? I'll go and find you more qualified ones. I'll give you five, you know, because yeah, uh, yeah. it, it's crazy. I was like, what are you getting back? And they think in with good intentions, especially small businesses, they're trying to do the right things because as you write, the industry said, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And they, you know, they do it and they're getting nothing back. And I think, again, I'm aligned with you hundred percent. We have to go back. What are your business goals? And then what is the best platform that, you know, is going to align with those goals and then get really good at it and then maybe add on one other, you know, one or two others. But I don't think it's a good idea to try and be everything to everyone everywhere uh, because for most businesses, you don't have the resources. So if it comes down to that, you know, there's it comes down for most people when it comes to company pages, it's who's got time to create content. We have to get smarter about the content creation machine and how we repurpose things because not everything has to be created from scratch. And I think if people can have some good systems in place, and that's how I love working with businesses, then it's not as big an impost. The company page is free. It takes about 15 minutes to set up um, and there can be lots of advantages without investing lots of time. Now, I've had some people try and say, you know, how often should you post? When should you post? And I'm like, well, I don't know what your business resources are, but I would say if you could do once a week, that's more than enough for most companies, you know, for the smaller end of town. If you've got resources, of course, two to three times a week would be great. Uh, but if you can put once a week, then it's a place to start, but it's more about consistency over a long period of time, not go hard for three months and then disappear. Like that doesn't work. Um, and so it's about how do you build it? And I think it's baby steps um, rather than trying to dive in the deep end, um, but supporting your employees to get better at LinkedIn so you can share the load. Uh, one of the best things about company pages is that you can have multiple page admins. So you can really spread the workload out if you've got multiple people in a team. So, you know, there's other advantages. You can't do that on a, you know, LinkedIn profile. Uh, you know, I know that people do, but um, ultimately you are responsible for your own LinkedIn profile and it shouldn't be outsourced. Um, and so we've got things like that that are going on that company pages can help with. It's against the terms and conditions, isn't it, to allow somebody else to have your logins? 
Absolutely. Um, does it happen? Absolutely. Are there lots of virtual assistants doing great jobs out there? Absolutely. Uh, do I have my opinions on that? Yes, I do. I don't understand how someone can be a thought leader and have someone else create it for them. I'm pretty anti that. Um, I don't care how busy you are. If it's important to you, you'll make time. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting to see how it all plays out. But ultimately, it's like, how do you get the most out of what you've got? you know, and looking at LinkedIn as a holistic and not just ignoring one part of it, which is company pages. Um, how do you bring it all together? And, you know, that's my favorite part of LinkedIn is bringing the synergies between those, all those pieces and, you know, getting the best results for the business. Yeah. You see, um, I think that's fine. Like, I think actually the posting on LinkedIn is a pretty mechanical process. And if I have taken the time to, to produce some content and I'm a thought leader, then I think it's fine to get an assistant or a virtual assistant to, to upload it and schedule it. I think that's fine. Um, but then this comes to the other thing. A friend of mine who I can't name because he works for these people, but he describes it as the great 21st, the 20, great 21st, the, the great 21st century publishing swindle which is these social media platforms have convinced us all that we need to become content creators and we never used to be that, do you know what I mean? And they don't pay us for that. And so I think also that's an investment. So I think you, you really do need to be careful about what you're investing and what the return is. So when you go into a business, I'm imagining, but I can be wrong because I normally am, that you don't say, I'm not interested in talking to you about anything other than LinkedIn company pages. You don't say, yeah, so like you will talk to them about their personal profiles. You will talk to them about the benefit of being proactive as individuals. Do you go beyond LinkedIn? Do you talk about if, if there is an opportunity on another social media platform? How does that work? Look, for me personally, you're right. I look at it holistically. Where are we going to get best bang for buck? Especially if it's something that people don't have a lot of money to invest. I really want to have a genuine impact in their business. So making sure the profile doesn't undersell the business owner is one of my favorite things to fix straight up. Uh, in my experience, most CEOs and founders and owners of businesses, their LinkedIn profiles are atrociously underselling them. And so I love to fix those kind of pieces. But ultimately, you've got to have a look where what works for the resources that you've got. Like I said, for some of my clients that I work with, the thought of getting their employees on LinkedIn, there's it's just like a flat out no. And no amount of justification from me will ever change their mind. So we work with that. On the other hand, we've got teams that go the other way and want everybody to be trained and everybody to be on LinkedIn. And that's not always a good idea as well. Cause as you said, like we can invest in training for people that will never use it. Uh, and so we've got to try and find that balance for what works. How do we use profiles, content for some people it's direct messaging and no content um so there's never a one size fits all that's why i've never done like group training because i'm like how can you do it for a business how can you go and do group training for multiple businesses and you know bring that all together because there's just so many things at play it can be politics it can be resources as far as money goes it could be time there's all kinds of things that are going on within a business that you need to understand so you know how do you get the best out of it and sometimes we start with a company page and work our way up to the other areas and why do i do that because people are happy to create behind the cover of a company page, right? So when the content goes out with the company page name on it and not their personal name, they're much more comfortable. And I've got some brilliant account, like people that create content for company pages that if I try and ask them to do a personal post, they're running the other way a million miles an hour because there's such an anxiety around it's a professional platform. What will impact my career? Uh, will my you know colleagues see it? What will someone judge me? You know, all kinds of things go through employees' heads. And so we've got to get, you know, get to the core what works best for that team so that we can achieve their goals. And mostly we're at brand awareness stage. We're back at the very beginning, uh, you know, for the multinationals who have teams of 30 outsourcing unlimited advertising budgets. That's not typically who I like to work with because I want these, especially, you know, small and medium businesses to have a voice. Okay. Fantastic. Excellent. 
Okay, good. And I think there is, uh, for me, I have gone in and, and taught teams of salespeople. For me, anyone who's customer facing, anyone who has even a sniff of a responsibility for generating leads in a business should be investing 15 minutes a day on LinkedIn to make sure that they are turning the thing over and, and realizing that benefit. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. So what I'm interested to know now then is what does success look like for your customers? Have you got some successes that people have, uh, customers have been particularly pleased with? You know, what can people expect if they engage with you? Maybe that's the question. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm a salesperson at heart. I'm driven by sales so revenue. I can expect and... to be sold hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I because I'm good at sales. I don't sell hard. Um, I had someone actually say, you know, ask about that today, and I don't send DMs to people. A hundred percent of my business actually comes from my content and referrals. And they were like, "What? You're not doing this hardcore?" And I'm like, "No, don't need to at this point in time." But um, you know, for my clients, I'm generate it's two things. It's how many conversations are they having that give them the opportunities that they're after. And then obviously we're talking about dollars because if there's no return on investment and there are some times where that's happened because what will happen is I'll come in and I'll start to work with a client and company pages are very unforgiving and don't give you a lot of dopamine hits in the beginning. And so most of them can give up before they see the results. And that is a part that I've had to struggle with. I've had clients that have struggled with it, but for those who do it over the longer term, so I'm talking like probably 12 months plus, they pay back. So I've worked with clients that, for instance, here in Australia, I'm on the East Coast over here in Sydney, they're on the West Coast, you know, in Western Australia, and they wanted to target this market over here. And we've been able to do that successfully. Um, and it's really opened up new markets for them. So for others, it's about how do you reach decision makers, you know, having conversations with the right people, opening those doors. You know, I fell in love with LinkedIn because you can reach pretty much anywhere at any level at any company, if you just be polite and have some manners, you know, and that to me is incredible with not having those gatekeepers in front and between the decision makers. Um, that's where I was like a kid in a candy store eight years ago. I was like, this is so cool. I can get people at a time that's convenient to them without getting lost in a big, deep inbox. Um, and so there's just so many opportunities, but yeah, ultimately for me, the measure is how much money do you make from it? Excellent, which should be the measure because this, I think, is not the way people think about marketing and it's not the way they do marketing. I tell people, if you are proactively marketing, you're effectively in the business of buying customers. It will take some investment of time, energy, money, and then it all becomes very objective. You know, it's like, can we, can we buy customers for less and can we generate more from those customers? You know, it's like drive up your cost, you know, drive down your cost of customer acquisition, up your lifetime customer value, that's your profit. Um, that's where it should be. Not enough people think about it like that. I think that's the problem. Good. So it sounds to me like people are getting actual dollars and cents value from these company pages. That's kind of what I've been looking for. Yeah, look, and like I said, when we talk about does it show up in the feed as much? Absolutely not. Like, and that's the part, if I had my Christmas wish, from LinkedIn, it was like, please give pages a fair chance in the feed, like, you know, organically. Uh, I hope when the discover feed comes in and I've seen, you know, the screenshots of that, that having two places to get discovered will really help businesses. Um, and the way that you would do that is through LinkedIn lives and LinkedIn events, because there's new tabs on these discover, uh, feeds, which I'm super excited because LinkedIn, if you want to know what content that they're pushing, uh, newsletters slash articles and LinkedIn lives, that's the two things on company pages that they're really pushing. So long form content, why is it good? Well, you've got a video tab that sits on your company page, which is not on your personal profile. So that's kind of cool. And they're great formats that you can repurpose. And again, it takes some of that workload out. Uh, so these are the kinds of things that are coming through. If we just, you know, set up building your followers now, set up working out what kind of content works, because I, as I said, the future is looking really bright, but it's just there are other things that get in the way as far as showing in the home feed. Fantastic. And are you engaging with LinkedIn themselves? Do you have like a channel there? You do? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so well, I'm that's actually impressive part of because what... when I wanted yeah. to know about my 17 times 17 pounds that I spent, I couldn't find anyone to talk to me on the planet. Yeah, because I was the only crazy slash genius talking about company pages a couple of years ago, I stood out on the platform. And so I got to be part of what's called the LinkedIn Small Business Advisory Council to the pages team. And so I get to test new features like LinkedIn audio for company pages is being tested as we speak. Uh, I got to test articles and newsletters. I get to test, you know, a whole bunch of things. But you've just got to look at it and go, if the modern B2B buyer is trying to cut out the salesperson, you know, come hell or high water, they would love if it was like a B2C where you didn't have to talk to anyone. It's more than just the sales team now that needs to be on LinkedIn. We've got to come at it from so many different ways. Um, and really, you know, who's the backstop? You know, we've got different people doing different things. And the company page is really just something that should be supporting the employees. Um, it's not a broadcast. Those company pages that just broadcast, here's our facts and figures. It's all about us. Um, they don't work. So as soon as you flip it, how do you make it all about what your ideal client wants? No one cares whether it's got a logo or a profile photo because we just want that education and information. Um, and so that's where the opportunity is for company pages. Excellent. Cool. So that brings us, I think, to question number three, which is good. We've answered two questions already. <laughs> okay, good. So question number three is, and literally in a minute or two minutes, because we will chop this up and put this on TikTok, especially, um, what is your recommendation for anyone who wants to get started um, with uh, leveraging their LinkedIn company pages or wants to get better with their company pages? Well, I co-authored the world's first book on LinkedIn company pages, Business Gold, and I'm going to hold that one up because there wasn't any other resources for people getting started. So go back and learn the basics. And LinkedIn tells us you get 30% extra impressions if your page is set up 100% correctly. Go back, do the basics, re-have a look at your page, make sure it's set up, and then go forward uh, because... The more that you find out about pages, the more that you'll actually see that there's so many other tools that you haven't been using. And that's my advice to people. Excellent. Good. Okay, good. So we're flying through the questions now. Question number four. Um, what do you recommend people read or what content do you recommend that people consume? Yeah, look, obviously, you know, Business Gold, it's the world's first and only book on company pages. And I would say it again, because what happened and the reason we wrote it is because people didn't know what to do. You know, company pages were nothing, they weren't spoken about uh, and they weren't actually being talked about by LinkedIn trainers anywhere. And so people were kind of like, well, what do we do? And so that's why we wrote it. Um, it's kind of crazy to think that LinkedIn has been around for 20 years and no one had done it before um you know just that's mind-blowing for me but get the basics right and then work your way up um and then all the other social selling principles apply you know about being top of mind keeping consistent those kind of things um they apply just as much on the company page okay fantastic is there uh, what other books have you read or content have you consumed that's really changed your thinking or driven you forward yeah look i think there's another cool resource which isn't a book but i think most people should go and have a look at and there's actually a group on linkedin for linkedin page administrators and so that's like a global group that's run by the linkedin marketing team that runs pages and you get to see people's feedback each other help with questions but most importantly the linkedin teams in there and so when you come in there you can see when they put stuff out when they're talking about it and you can go in and just get what's happening with pages what new features have come through and then how can you get better at it by learning from peers that are page administrators as well so whilst it's not a book as such um, i think it's a really awesome resource that most people don't know even exists i didn't even know it existed but to be honest i think people have forgotten that, uh, that, that linkedin pages have existed it's like every you know it's like i don't know anyone like recruiters are investing in linkedin company pages but i don't think marketers at all um, I've just remembered okay. another benefit always of being a business on these social media platforms, which is that the analytics you get is so much more effective, useful. 
Yeah, absolutely. And company pages, they come built in and we're seeing more and more like the competitor competitor analytics recently has been given an upgrade. There's lots of things that we can dive into. I'm hoping soon, for instance, with newsletters, we've asked for more feedback around, you know, the open rates or how much people read through them and different things. So I think we'll see that come through over time because in that particular group that I just mentioned, they listen to that feedback, they're watching. Um, I've been lucky enough to have many conversations with the product marketing team that looks after pages. Um, They hear our feedback, they're listening, and they're actively putting these things in place to make sure that pages are one, easy to be the administrator of, so you can run the page simply. They want you to grow faster. They want you to obviously have that content reaching the right audience. And so when you look at it from that perspective, what are LinkedIn trying to do? They want pages to be successful. Um, And I got to have a really interesting LinkedIn Live with a member of the uh, product marketing team a, a few months ago. And it was really obvious just how much they're doing that. And the interesting part that came up for me is that I thought that LinkedIn was all about the multinationals, huge companies that were, you know, all the new features were targeted at them. Um, but ultimately there's something like 80% of pages actually link back to small and medium businesses. So, um, it, you know, the things that they're trying to draw are for that market and not for the other way around, which was surprising for me. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. Sorry, you've got me distracted now because now I'm looking at the total number of impressions that we get from the content uh, from the through the company page. Um, I would say you've got 300 followers, roughly. You would probably get 50 to 100 max. Um, you know, the numbers of followers that I would be aiming for is around a thousand. One to two thousand is kind of the sweet spot for most businesses uh, when you're beginning, and then you can get those numbers up. Are you going to go viral on a company page? Very likely not. Um, It would take some of those bigger pages. The Marketing Millennials is a page that's grown like crazy um, over the last two years, but, you know, they're the unicorns, not the uh, everyday business is a bit more, as I said, it's a hard slog. uh, But once you get the momentum, then it builds and it stays. But that first initial, you know, period while you're building it, it, it's hard work. (laughs) Not going to lie. And the thing is, I don't think it needs to be the main gig for anyone. It's just, I mean, I think we've come up with six solid reasons why people should be investing in their company pages today. So I think we've done enough. Okay, good. So now I need to check in with you and see how you are. How have you found your experience of being on the Talk Marketing Show? It's good. It's. I'm actually really loving that you've asked me such different questions because you come at things from a different perspective with your experience. Um, and it's really nice to kind of have that moment where I go, should I be rethinking? What can I take on? What's new? How else can I approach this? Um, but I, I think you've, like you said, there's, you know, six pretty good reasons to have a company page. I love that, you know, we can obviously expand that with, you know, other people and having conversations. But ultimately, I think you've got to look at where does this fit? as a piece in the bigger marketing puzzle. Um, And that's what I want people to do. I want you to just not automatically wipe it out, which is the default position. If we've encouraged people in this conversation to have a look at it with a fresh set of eyes, especially if you haven't touched it in the last two years, um, then that's a good thing for me. Fantastic. And I think we've had, I like to challenge a little bit. I mean, I do ask different questions because I'm just different. (laughs) That's my problem. I'm a little bit special, I think. Okay, cool. So yeah, but I do like to have a challenging conversation, but 100%, like sometimes people will come, like the, the people will comment on something I'm doing and going, oh, this is a bit shitty. <laughs> do you know what I mean? This kind of mark, it's a bit spammy or it's a bit whatever. I think the point is start doing it and then you start to see what works, you know, have your ears open and, and, and use the feedback to, to develop it into something really good and useful. But I think people who dump on people for doing something slightly different, I don't, I don't think that's useful. You know, for me, it's a world of opportunity. And as long as you get involved and you do it and you have your ears open and, and are looking to see what the benefit of that is, then that's marketing, you know. And actually, marketing is the only way you're going to be more successful in your business, um, sales and marketing. Okay, good. The reason I'm asking, of course, is because if you've had a good experience, then you will find it less difficult to throw a couple of people under the bus 
um, who might also enjoy to have a conversation like this with me. So who have you got in mind? Who do you think will have something interesting, useful to say to my tiny, tiny audience? And who do you think might actually be prepared to say it? <laughs> Well, I've got two people in mind, They, you know, based on this conversation that we've had. And one of them is Michelle B. Griffin, uh, who is the other co-author that I had for the LinkedIn branding book, personal branding strategist. But we had wrote that book purely and simply to bring out the power of building a employee slash personal brand and a business brand on LinkedIn. So I think it would be good to get the other half of the conversation. So I come at things from one way, she comes at it from another. Um, and her personal branding, you know, kind of methods on LinkedIn are a little bit different to other people. Call her my uh, branding therapist, because uh, she's talked me off a few ledges. Uh, and, you know, for someone that didn't come from a marketing background, uh, it's been really interesting for me to have my eyes opened after the last two years. And yeah, just love learning from her. So th that's one person. Um, okay, my cool. second so let me just say right there, do you, are you a spiritual person at all? Uh, I would say open to that. Yes. Okay. Because I'm not particularly spiritual. I'm not religious. But I do believe that the universe provides you with what you need. And I'm actually oh. desperate to be speaking to a personal branding strategist. Like, I really, that's on my list is that's the next person I need to speak to. So that would well, be amazing. I've Excellent. just given you the best that I know um, that's built on foundational and not just this fluffy LinkedIn version of personal branding, which has been diluted into personal branding for writing profiles and writing content. That's not it. Um, it's, you know, getting back to the foundationals before you even get onto LinkedIn, if, you know, that's your platform of choice. So uh, my go-to, like I said, my idea of, you know, personal branding was pick some colors when I started my business. And we share about that in the book, which is pretty funny how far I've had to come. Uh, you know, the things that I've had to learn about marketing have been from people on LinkedIn and it's been pretty crazy. Excellent. Okay, cool. And there was another person you had in mind. Yeah. So my second person is going to be Danielle Guzman. Um, I don't know if you've spoken to her, but she's the person on LinkedIn that always makes me think and challenge my thoughts around how LinkedIn for business happens. And especially from an employee advocacy perspective, uh, she's done hands on social media globally for Mercer, which is obviously a multinational huge company uh, and it's really interesting to always see what it's like to build a team on the ground in a business and get them active on linkedin and yeah she just always teaches me something and so i i think your audience would also take a lot out of it fantastic i'm excited about both of those that's exactly what you need to do is a little pitch for them when they're coming along um michelle what is it about michelle's and also using your middle initial is that something that michelle's do uh, yes, because if you're around my age, you know, I'm 46, so give or take five years, what happens is everybody was called Michelle, you know, it was just the name of those years. Uh, so when you went searching for me on LinkedIn, then what happens is you come on and there's 50,000 Michelle Raymonds and you couldn't find me. So I added the J so that you could find me. Um, and I believe that the Michelle Griffin that you most likely find on the internet without the B, I think they were actually in jail for murder or something. So there's a bit of a story behind that one. So uh, yeah, so from that perspective, it is literally to make it easier for people to find me on LinkedIn. Okay, great. And if they are, your namesake has been convicted for murder, then that's absolutely where you have to do personal branding. That's where it absolutely has to happen. Okay, amazing. Yeah. I do think it would be better if you called yourself um, Michelle E.L. Raymond. That would be funnier. <laughs> now we've lost it. We've gone past the edge. We've gone over the edge. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Not who? E.L. for everybody loves. Oh, there you go. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I didn't pick up what you were putting down. <laughs> and you said that like an hour and a half ago when we started this. Michelle, oh this God, has been hilarious. such a cool conversation. We've got to the end. Um, so what we have to do now is we'll say goodbye for the benefit of anyone who's still watching. Um, and then I'll hang up and we'll say goodbye like normal human beings. Um, but Michelle, I have thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Um, you know, I, like everybody on the planet, is a LinkedIn pages skeptic. Um, and I am less now. You know, you've given us six really good reasons to go and make sure that at least we are putting out the presentation of ourselves that's consistent with what we do. 
Um, and I think, yeah, maybe I'll invest a little bit more in that. So you have intrigued me and motivated me to do something. That's kind of the point of these conversations. So bless you. Thank you so much for being here. It is my absolute pleasure. And that is my work here done. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to check out this episode of the Talk Marketing series. If you found this interesting and useful, you can check out the Talk Marketing playlist here. And this is something that YouTube thinks you might find useful. And if you haven't yet, please take a second to like, share, subscribe and comment because that will give us the motivation to continue on this epic journey.